What is that volcano doing in Iceland? Sulfur smell in Grindavik? That is new. We recently had that at Campi Flegre in Italy, that gases are going all over the areas there, but now Grindavik. What is happening? Something strange could be happening. We'll talk about that. And also, what they're saying is that it's too early to do any repairs or anything in Grindavik. They started to demolish six apartments at the nursing home because they were basically cracking away from the nursing home event center, uh, threatening to damage that. They're also saying now there are no signs of subsidence, so no eruption or what is it? But more voices, more officials are saying, in our opinion, it's not the right time to undertake any major reconstruction right now, because the next eruption could be around the corner. That's what they're thinking with very little warning time. And also the support for Grindavik is kind of changing with, with other people. They say it it's not advisable to start large-scale reconstruction immediately what the people of Grindavik would like to have because also then there's voices we can expect a larger eruption than before and of course it's most likely to occur again between Selingerfell and Storaskogfell like the last ones but then it has to be seen in what direction will the fissures expand because that's what they usually do in the last few eruptions they were expanding or opening up to the north not that much to the south but they could and then Grindavik would be at risk so there's an indication of increased pressure but when is it going to happen there's news from the Icelandic Metrological Office they're also giving us new graphs they're saying they're having difficulties to really predict what and when something's going to happen. They say it's difficult to get a clear picture of the development of the activity, not only now, but also for the coming years on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Will it continue like this? Or is this the last one? Or will this eruption even happen? Because they've been waiting for it for quite a while now. And they are making it clear. They say we need to expect that Mother Nature is going to surprise us. So they're saying anything can happen, basically. But based on the available monitoring data that they have right now, everything indicates that the volume of magma that has now accumulated in the magma chamber underneath Swartzengi will eventually build up enough pressure to trigger a new magma flow and even an eruption that could happen in the same area like the last ones. So if it erupts, that will be the eighth time in the Sutnuka Crater series. And what will be the development of the scenario after that? And they're giving us a possible development scenario for the coming month. And it is assumed that the magma accumulation will continue after the next eruption so that this circle will continue then the timing of the poss possible ninth eruption in this area will depend on the following two factors so how much volume of magma flowed from the magma chamber underneath Swartzengi in the previous eruption and how fast is magma flowing from a deeper magma reservoir, basically refeeding the more shallow magma chamber following a volcanic eruption. So the magma accumulation, this is what they have measured in the run-up of the last two eruptions was slower than the ones that were measured in the eruptions that happened in late 2023 and early 2024. So a rough estimate of the rate of magma accumulation before the last eruption is about one quarter of what it was at the beginning of this eruption cycle when the first eruption, not intrusion, eruption occurred in December 2023. And they're giving us this graph here. And that's kind of interesting how, how you see that. It shows the length of magma accumulation periods. These are the blue bars in the run-up, basically, towards eruptions. 
since December 2023, December 18th, 2023, when we had the first eruption. And then the volume of the magma flows that came out, that, that's the orange bars. And the magma accumulation periods between the eruptions in January and February 2023, if, if we look at that, were between 27 to 25 days until we saw the next eruption. But then for the eruptions in August and November 2024, it was already 85 to 90 days, so close to three months to see the next eruption. And a large part, that's what they're saying, of the magma that erupted from Swartzengi in January 24 went into forming a magma tunnel because it, it needed to go a long way so that the lava flow that formed in this eruption, the lava flow that actually, the lava that came out to the surface was actually the smallest. So the volcano needed to build a highway first for a flow path. So what they're saying is if that trend continues that the magma flow from the deeper magma reservoir that is refilling the more shallower magma reservoir, if that trend of gradually slowing down continues, it will take increasingly longer to collect enough magma in the shallow magma chamber um, underneath Swartzengi um, to, to be able to trigger a new eruption or a new magma flow that couldn't end up in an intrusion as well. And they know from the past, if the rate of a magma accumulation becomes this slow, it has two consequences. So many months, even years could pass before enough magma has accumulated to trigger a new eruption. And also, the slower the magma accumulation, the more difficult it is to estimate the timing of the next eruption, of course, right? With an accuracy greater than a few months, or whether it will erupt again at all. So it was easier the last two years than it might be in the future if there is really this trend that it's gradually slowing down. But they also say, they say it is important to consider or realize that nothing in the available data or the model calculation gives reason to exclude the possibility that the rate of magma accumulation under Swartzengi will increase again in the future. So everything's possible. And they're relating to other volcanoes, to other examples of eruptions um, and history. And they're comparing it with the Krafla eruption and the process, they say, was evident in this series of eruption from 1975 to 1984, when a significant reduction in inflow rates between 82 and 84 led to a longer period between eruptions. And despite this longer waiting period, they still had another eruption that was occurring in September 1984. And then they're saying, when you look at the last eruption at Kafla in 1984, the expansion in the area stopped between 85 and 88. And then it picked up again. And then it lasted until 1990. So the last expansion period of that magma chamber did not end with an eruption. So will we see the same here now? It would be definitely a, a possibility to, to consider. And they also say that during known volcanic periods on the Reykjanes Peninsula that have lasted for um, hundreds of years, and they were estimating that this activity could also last decades or hundreds of years, the activity has always shifted between different volcanic systems. So could it shift back to Fakrad Alsfjall? We've seen earthquakes in the Krizovic system. Who knows? They have been kind of speculating about this for over a year. Is it shifting somewhere else? Maybe it's shifting towards Alpverb. That's what they've been thinking for a while. So if it's shifting between volcanic systems, it's likely that when the current volcanic activity at Swartzengi ends, that it will shift to a nearby volcanic system. 
but also always with the possibility that it shifts back to the current system and that it resumes erupting in the current location. And I, it would be ideal if it moved somewhere else away from the critical infrastructure of Swartzangi, the Blue Lagoon and Grindavik. So they say it cannot be ruled out that volcanic activity will resume within the Swartzangi volcanic system after a few years of dormancy. So everything can happen, but at least, you know, we're aware of the options. And if it all of a sudden gets quiet, especially for the people that live in Grindavik, they should know it can start again at any time. And now that there's a sulfur smell, um, is there something intruding underneath Grindavik? We will talk about this shortly. An interesting graph that they're showing us that I want to talk about quickly is here when they're showing about the, the Krafla eruptions. So it shows the interaction between the magma tunnel formation so that it has a flow path from the magma chamber to the eruption site and the land elevation in the middle of the Krafla caldera, the land rise. If a magma chamber is filling up underneath, it's blowing up the surface. So that red graph here shows the land elevation within that measuring point in the Krafla caldera. And the upper graphic shows the metamorphic zones of each eruption that happened. So in the upper image, the red color represents an eruption. So when you look at this example, the conclusion that they're drawing from this, they say it shows us the unpredictable behavior of volcanic systems. And it kind of explains why it is not possible to right now predict the development of this Swartzangi volcanic system in the near future. They say that assuming that a land uplift at Swartzangi will continue, no matter at what rate, if it just continues, it must be considered likely that further magma formation or volcanic eruptions will occur in the future at the Sutnuka Crater series. So it could go on. <laughs> That's what they're saying. It is important to recall what has been previously stated in the discussion of scenarios that a new eruptive phase has begun on the Reykjanes Peninsula basically since 2021 with the Fagradalsfjall eruptions. The activity has shifted between volcanic systems from Fagradalsfjall now to Swartzengi and eruptions have occurred at two systems, two out of six volcanic systems on the peninsula. And the same thing has happened 800 years ago. It has been dormant for 800 years. But when the, during the last volcanic period that ended 800 years ago, the same thing was happening. Activity has shifted between nearby volcanic systems. That's why they're assuming that when the magma accumulation ceases underneath Swartzengi, it may move to other systems on the peninsula. So the peninsula is not out of the woods then. But it could take several months until they'd be able to detect a land rise somewhere else because magma needs to travel. And also that's the same time frame that they would need once they detect it somewhere else that they could declare the event underneath Swartzangi over for now. They're happy that they have achieved a great deal of knowledge through all these eruptions that gives them the ability to warn of an impending eruption with a few hours notice once they see the earthquake swarm and the land rise stops. So, but they say it is not possible to measure or interpret the available data that they have to date, how the activity will develop in the coming years. They just don't know. For them, it is time will tell. It's a waiting game. Their conclusion is they said, for now, residents and the civil protection authorities need to be prepared and take measures for future volcanic activity within the Swartzangi volcanic system 
in the coming month and also elsewhere on the Reykjanes Peninsula in the coming years. But what's going on with Grindavik? Where is that smell coming from? Citizens were alarmed when just yesterday they started to smell sulfur, which they have never smelled before. So this must come from somewhere. They were calling um, the firemen, the fire department, and like, what's going on? And it was not just a little bit, it was really a strong odor of sulfur. And of course, as you can imagine, after all that has happened in Grindavik, it has really raised big concerns that magma is near, that magma is underneath, that there's a magma intrusion happening right underneath Grindavik, underneath this lots of cracks and tunnels. And the first event was a massive magma intrusion on November 10th, 2023. An over 15 kilometer long magma dike has formed right underneath Grindavik and into the sea. So basically coming from underneath Sangi and then going there. So is something going in that direction again? underneath the town or near the town that might cause these sulfur gases to, to come out. So the firefighters came and tried to investigate that phenomenon. They tried to find something, but they were unsuccessful. They didn't find the source. So that's why, and this is concerning because this is kind of like hinting what might is it hinting? No, it's not. This might hint at what's happening in the next eruption. Is Kindervik at risk? Because they cannot rule out, that's what they're saying, that some magma has traveled underneath Grindavik. Or that that will be a better case scenario that only volcanic gases spread along that magma tunnel and then then are being released throughout the town, throughout these many cracks that have formed on November 10th. And then there's another theory. Well, could that come from the previous eruption site? Is this like wind blowing it into Grindavik? We've had that before. So during all the other previous eruptions, we always had to look at the wind forecast whether Grindavik had to be evacuated if there's the volcanic gases coming. But they should know the difference, right? It's, I don't think so, guys. I don't think it's the wind blowing it from somewhere in the Sudnuka area. Because, you know, it really reminds me what I'm reporting about daily, basically the super volcano in Italy, Campi Fligri, where the magma chamber is right underneath Puzzoli and an area of Western Naples. And that's where now the CO2 emissions have drastically increased and also the sulfur smell is basically, it's a strong odor when all this activity has increased in the last year and a half, escalated, the smells were getting stronger because there's a volcano underneath. So it worries me when I hear that this is happening in Grindavik right now. Because basically in the last eruptions, we thought, yeah, Grindavik's somehow out of the woods. The threat is now Blue Lagoon and the Sorotsangi power plant. But is there something going on underneath? So we will have to wait and see what's going to happen, guys. This was a quick update. I hope you liked it. If you did, leave this video a like. Become a new subscriber if you're new here. And if you want to support the channel with a monthly membership trip, basically a supporting member, and you're getting some behind the scenes and private life stuff from me for that support, click the join button or the link in the description of this video. And if you'd like to support the channel with buying me some coffees, uh, that all goes towards my sick dog, Apollo. Right now, thank you, thank you for your support. For those that have already done that, you're absolutely amazing. You have no idea, guys. Um, the link is also in the description of this video. And uh, yeah, check out the videos in the end screen. And uh, I'll see you very soon, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.